series called Fixing Figures. Uh, today we're going to work with the new Star Wars Black series, Balin Skull and Shin Hadi, because there is a major height problem. Uh, Balin should be several inches taller than Shin, so we're going to go ahead and do a couple part swaps here. For Balin, uh, you've all seen the Land Speeder Luke swap out here with the Reva thighs. Uh, for Shin, I haven't seen a whole lot of tutorials for this one here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Moff Gideon. We're going to look at ways to make this swap pretty simple and easy. Probably going to have to do is pop off the knee pads. Doesn't look like I want to cut those off. They're pretty thin, but there's uh, some creases in the Moff Gideon there, knee area where the sleeve is, that we can go ahead and glue those knee pads right in there, no problem. So first what you're going to want to do is check out my boil and pop video so you can go ahead and take apart your Riva and Balin figure. Once you get those taken apart, we're going to go ahead and use the thigh and combine that with the lower leg boot area of Balin. This one's a very simple swap, no painting required, very minimal work. Basically just use the boil and pop method to take apart the figure. And while it's still warm, you should be able to push the Balin legs in there. But the hinge on the Riva legs is a little bit deeper, uh, so make sure you give those a good push. Otherwise, uh, his tunic will pop out a little bit. So you want to give those a squeeze once you get them on there, and they'll pop right into place. There we go. And in the process of heating tunic got a little bit off center so I had to go ahead and pull that back down. If you look underneath the belt buckle there's a tab that plugs into a slot in the waist to keep that from sliding around. So that adds probably about an inch in scale, maybe inch and a half compared to where we were at before, but Shin needs to be a lot smaller so we still need to go ahead and do the thigh swap on here. Again, go ahead and check out the Boil and Pop video on the channel. We're going to go ahead and use that, take these apart, and then and these knee pads, I don't like how thin they are, so we're probably just going to see how these soften up when we uh, boil these. So if you look underneath, there's really not a whole lot of room to work with, and I'm kind of hesitant on trying to cut those out of there. So go ahead and check out that video, use that to take apart the Moff Gideon. We're going to basically do the same thing here. We're going to go ahead and use the upper thigh area, upper leg for Moff and the lower leg for Shin. And if you mix up the parts, the easiest way to tell which one's the right and the left, because the, it's very, very difficult to tell on a Black Series figure if they don't really curve the feet too much. Uh, the buckles are on the outside of the armor for both Balin and Shin. Uh, if you don't have the buckles on the straps, then that means it's the inside part of the leg. So that'll help you line those up to make sure that you get them put on the right side. So there you go. After swapping that out, you can see it definitely created a massive height difference. This is a lot closer in scale to how these figures should be. And for this one, the apple barrel matte black is a perfect match here for the shin leg. If you don't have any paint experience, you don't have to worry. All you need to do is just make sure that you apply an even coat. Just use a little bit of water to mix your paint in. And as it's drying, just keep that brush moving. You'll smooth out all those little creases and lines that you normally get on a brush stroke. And the paint will sink right in. And then all you have to do is just spray a little clear coat on that. Now, as I was uh, doing the boil and pop, uh, as I suspected, the knee pads did pop right off, so I didn't have to cut those. Uh, so all I'm doing here is applying a little dab of super glue to the back part of the tab of the knee pad. And there is a fold right at the top of the knee on the uh, Moff Gideon figure. You could just go ahead and push the super glue down inside that tab. So now that we did the leg swap, I want to go ahead and touch up some of the paint apps on these figures. The sculpts are really nice, but the paint and the armor uh, just leaves a lot to be desired. So this is a pretty simple one here. 
it's going to look a lot more complicated than the process actually is at the end, but that just shows that with a little bit of work and a little bit of patience, you can get some great results out of an already pretty good looking figure with not a whole lot of experience. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to fix the beard. I'm going to go ahead and use a black, touch of black, and darken up a gray. And we're going to use a lot of water, heavy amount of water with this one, because we're going to give it a little bit of a wash. What I'm going to do here is a dark gray wash into the beard. And to do that, you want to make sure that your brush is mostly water with just a enough of a dab of paint to give the water color. What that'll do is when you apply the water, it will naturally sink in. The density of the paint is going to be heavier than the water, so that'll sink to the bottom. So if you use a lot of water, you can just dab the, the drop right into the beard and the gray paint will sink into the creases. And if you don't like where the paint sinks, as long as the water is still wet, you can just dab your brush and drag it and it'll manipulate the paint in there while the water is wet. So even after it sets, if you apply another dab or use a wet brush, you can move those paint particles right along. So that's what I'm doing here, applying it to the beard. You don't really have to worry about following the lines. Because like I said, that paint, as the water dries, that paint's going to recede back into the creases. And if you give it a little bit of a dab along where the Hasbro paint apps are, it'll blend the beard a lot better instead of having that harsh white line that it normally did. I'm using here for the white is a folk art matte titanium white. It's a very crisp, almost snow style white. Um, compared to other other whites that I've used, this one does have a lot better color. However, uh, make sure that you do wet your brush quite a bit as white paints tend to get chalky. So as soon as you get it to how, where it looks right and you're comfortable with it, just make sure you spray a good clear coat on there. Otherwise, white paint does tend to chip pretty easily compared to other, other acrylic paints. And here what I'm doing is just giving it a little bit of a dry brush almost with a couple of these different shades. technique here. I'm just using a little bit of a black and applying a dark wash along the facial features. Uh, what I find brings out the most detail in a figure's face is along the eye line. There's usually a lot of sculpted detail in there, but when they do the facial printing, it tends to wash out a lot of that detail. Um, and you also want to go along the ridge of the nose and the lips. That'll create the most three-dimension just applying a little bit of a wash to that figure. It doesn't really look like it does much on the surface, but you'll see a lot of more sculpted detail, and it just adds more dimension once you get that, get those paint apps on there. I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer here with some of the titanium white. Here I'm just going along some of the surface areas, keeping all the variation of the dark wash in those creases of the beard. And I went back in and applied a little bit more of a dark wash. We're going to go ahead and do the same to his armor. Controversy over the, the paint apps on this figure as to whether or not the greenish blue was accurate to reference photos. 
and it is, but it's a lot brighter than it appears on the show because of the color grading. So we're going to keep those the same, we're not going to erase those, but we're going to just add some washes to the plastic on this figure. So it doesn't look like it's a plastic tunic, it's going to tone down some of that shine on there, and then also dull down those paint apps a little bit. I first went and applied uh, using a gray wash over the blue, and then we're going to do a dark wash on top of that. So that way, the gray is just going to dull the hue of the, the blue, and then the dark wash is going to bring it back to look more like a black tunic. Um, and then we'll mess with the armor here in a few. Uh, apply a dark wash to the armor. The armor's really dark already, but I want to get a lot more of that sculpted detail out of it. So we're going to create some more contrast when I apply the silver weathering powders. And I went and gave the uh, gauntlets a dark wash so that the creases in the armor will actually pop a lot more once we brighten up the surface area. And then the same thing with this that like we did with uh, the other parts, just make sure your brush is wet and just apply enough of a paint to where you get the color on it. These washes aren't going to be a total opaque gloss over on the figure. They're basically just going to add a little bit of a surface tint to it. For the silver, I am using Folk Art uh, 506 Silver Anniversary. This one tends to be a little bit liquidy out of the bottle, but if you uh, use a dry brush technique, this gets a really nice color. I usually use a metallic paint for the base and then switch over to the Tamiya weathering powders. The weathering powders, um, you need something for it to stick to. Those don't stick well to just flat Hasbro plastic, so you always want to have at least a clear coat or some sort of a paint coat so that way the powders stick to it a lot better. There's a lot of detail on this figure that doesn't have paint apps like these sculpted buckles. Go ahead and do that on both uh, Shin and Balin. Yeah, here we'll switch over to the powders and we're just going to go ahead and apply a little bit to that. You'll notice on camera a lot, a lot better than you will in person as I'm doing this. Um, just adds more of a shine to that and picks up more light once you add these powders on there. It can get a good result with paint, but once I started using these for weathering and for metallic, it will never go back to anything else. Now the fun part. Let's fix this god-awful looking shin figure. I'm going to apply a dark wash onto the figure first using just matte black. There's a lot of sculpted detail in this hair that you can't see because there's no paint apps. So let's go ahead and just give this whole thing front to back a nice dark wash. If it ends up looking too black, don't worry. We're going to add some more paint apps here. Just spreading that around here first with the wet brush. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply some of the gray here. I mixed up uh, a touch of silver into the white and the gray just so it adds a little bit of a shine to it because um, looking at reference pictures Shin's hair is like a bleach blonde very metallic-y white so I added just a touch of silver just so that it gets some of the highlight you won't really see the silver tone in the color of it but it will reflect light a lot better What I did is I just started with that black wash, and then switched over to a gray, and then now we're adding the dry brush with this platinum white, or titanium white, shall I say. Um, and the dry brushing, you're just going to basically skim the surface areas. 
right now I'm gonna go ahead and use another dark wash uh, on, around the eyes, but for Shin, I did a little bit more because she has kind of a smoky eyeshadow. And I also applied a wash to the face to bring out some facial detail as well. And here on the tunic, I'm doing a gray wash. The color on the tunic is just something off about it. It was pretty close to reference photos because hers is like a grayish brown, but it really looks more worn than anything. It doesn't really look like it's a gray tunic. It just looks like it's a faded old Jedi robe. So adding some washes here to this is definitely going to tone down the plastic look and just help this figure out a lot overall. There is a little bit of a patch on her uh, robes where it looks more worn than others, so I'm going to use more gray just right there on that patch. They even sculpted it into the plastic, which is pretty cool, but they didn't paint it. And here I'm going to use that silver anniversary folk art, just do a little bit of a wash over the armor on her. Her armor is not quite as bright and metallic looking as uh, Balin's is in the show. Hers is a little bit more worn, so I'm not going to go too crazy with the silver. Just give it enough of a wash so that way you can see that it does look like it's made of metal and not just silver plastic. What I like to do is just go over the edges of any type of metallic item when you're doing weathering. Those will wear, the corners and edges will wear a lot faster than your average area, so you want to make sure that those are typically a lot brighter. This was a before picture here. And there you have it. There is uh, the improved Balin and Shin with the Luke Return of the Jedi robes. Uh, but as you can see, the height difference on these figures is much more accurate. With a little love and attention, you can go on and start fixing your there you have it folks that is fixing figures episode one i hope you liked this video if you did and you would like to see more just like it don't forget to like and subscribe and as always folks stay crafty